I go down to Manti, I take my gold plates with me. And what I have are 10 10 pound barbell weights. And through the middle of them, I have a three quarter inch pipe with a T handle. And the reason I did that is because I don't want anybody hurting themselves. And what I do is um, I'll go down to Manti and I'll be on the streets and the Mormons will walk by and I will ask them, do you believe Joseph Smith had gold plates? I'm not trying to be deceptive at all. I'm going to let them answer the questions and I'm going to respond accordingly. So I asked them, do you believe Joseph Smith had gold plates? And I would venture to say out of all the years that I've done this, probably 99.9% .9 of them all say yes. I said, okay, have you ever thought just how heavy would gold plates weigh? And of course they've never thought of that. Uh, many of them never even considered that. Um, I said, well, let me explain to you how heavy they would be. Gold, we know, weighs 1,200 pounds per cubic foot, really 1,204. I just rounded off to 1,200 pounds per cubic foot. And I say, now you know, Joseph Smith said the plates were six inches wide, eight inches long, and six inches deep. And, the, and if they don't know that for a fact by now, they pretty much figure I've done my homework on this. And I have no reason to fudge on this. I am taking Joseph Smith's description of the plates. And they go, okay. I said, well, that comes out to one-sixth of a cubic foot, the measurement he gives us. So if we take 1,200 and we divide it by six, we come up with 200 pounds. So if the plates were gold, they would have weighed 200 pounds. And they think, well, that's pretty heavy. And then they start coming up with all, because they know it's heavy, they start coming up with a lot of reasons why <clears throat> this should work. They'll say, well, yeah, but if you take plates, and they're not going to be perfectly flat, and so when you lay the plates on top of each other, they're going to have gaps in between. And this is a common theory that Mormon apologists use now, but they don't believe the plates were made of gold. They're beyond that. Uh, they believe they were made of an alloy that was much stronger than that, but had to have some gold in it. But it, when, getting back to the original story, they will say, well, if you take the plates and you add them on top of each other and they're not quite flat, you're going to have air gaps. I said, well, the problem is, is gold is a very soft and a very dense metal. And the weight of the gold itself, if you were to lay it on top of itself, the weight would tend to take those little wrinkles and they would push them out to where you really would end up virtually with a block of gold if they were made of gold. And I say, you know, Joseph Smith, according to the story, took these plates from their hiding place. And he says that he wrapped them in a linen frock, tucked them under his arm, and headed for home. After a while, he decides to get off the main road. And if, after he gets off the main road, he's hit by a man with the blow of a gun. This is what his mother says, and this is what the church has reprinted in their own manuals. The story has gone, been printed over and over again. In fact, they actually had a picture uh, last year, 2009, and one of the end signs had a, an illustration of Joseph Smith running away with the plates under his arm from a guy with a gun over his shoulder. And that's exactly what his mother said. And where does his mother get the story? Must have gotten it from Joseph Smith. Where else, you know, did she get this story? And we're supposed to believe that Joseph Smith carried these plates under his arm for a distance of three miles, uh, fighting off attackers because he was attacked three times during this time going home three miles away, and at times, his mother said, running at the top of his speed. It's impossible. It, it, it's it's an impossible story. So Mormons, knowing it's impossible, start making excuses. They'll say, well, you know, like the Mormon apologists, well, the plates must not have been made of gold. They must have been made of an alloy. And the, and the alloy of choice is called tambaga. It's a Central American alloy made partially, mostly of copper and gold. But it has to have a significant amount of gold in it to preserve the copper. Because if they were just copper, they would have been destroyed after all those years being buried in the ground. Copper even won't last forever. So it needs the gold to preserve it. And one Mormon metallurgist, a guy by the name of Reed Putnam, estimated that it had to have at least a third gold you know, to preserve the plates. The lightest that Reed Putnam estimates the plates could have weighed if made of tambaga would have been 53 pounds, he said. But he only gets down to that weight by putting a 50% air gap in between each of the plates. This is ridiculous because now you're getting rid of so many plates in order to make it lighter, now you don't really have enough text space to give us the Book of Mormon. 
The Book of Mormon, the 1830 edition, was around 580 pages long. And the page was about four and three quarters by about six and a half inches with a half inch margin around it. And remember, the plates themselves were six by eight, so it's not much smaller than the plates. It's smaller, but not much. But we're supposed to believe that Joseph Smith, on just two inches worth of plates, because he didn't translate all of it, he says he only translated two-thirds, which would be the top two inches. So out of that, and with a 50% air gap, how many plates are we really talking about? Not very many. And they've got to be at least thick enough to write on both sides, because if they're too thin, when you press on them, they indent. The weight would push the indenting back out, and the writing's lost. So on top two inches of plates, we get almost 580 pages worth of printed text. The, the 1830 edition Book of Mormon is about an inch and a half or inch and a quarter thick just in paper. And yet we're supposed to believe he put that whole book, the, all, that whole book is on those plates. Now, I'm sure that sounds faith promoting for a Mormon to want to believe it, but it sounds pretty ridiculous to me and a lot of other people. And that's what I want to get Mormons to see. The story doesn't work, as much as they'd like it to work. And what I'm trying to get across to Mormons, look, if you have faith in something that's not proven, that's fine. That, that's faith. But if you're going to have faith in something that can be disproven, that's not faith. That's foolishness. And God's not honored by believing in foolishness. This story can be disproved. We can try to replicate the story, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. And to believe it happened regardless of these facts is really foolish. That's what we're trying to get them to see. Because they understand, if there's no gold plates, there's no Book of Mormon. Mm -hmm. It's not an ancient work. It is a 19th century novel. Mormons will say that God gave Joseph Smith supernatural strength. This is a common answer they go to. And usually when a Mormon says that, I'll, I'll remind them. He says, you know, the fact that you just said that, you've proven to me that you believe this is beyond the strength of a normal human to do. You, it's impossible. So now you've entered in the supernatural strength element. Here's the problem. Joseph Smith never said God helped him carry the plates. Emma never said God helped her move the plates around when she had the plates on the table in the Smith home covered up. The eight witnesses who claimed to heft the plates never claimed they needed supernatural strength to do so. Moroni never claimed he needed supernatural strength to carry the plates around before he buried them. Mormon never claimed he needed supernatural strength to hand them to Moroni, who took them and finally buried them in the ground for Joseph Smith to find centuries later. You never read anywhere about supernatural strength. I mean, this is just a, an idea that Mormons have to bring up to make the statement work. And I remind them of that. I says, you are inventing things to make this story work. You're not reading the story as it's been told by your church. I am. You're not. Mm -hmm. Who's being more faithful to what your church is trying to teach? I am. Mm -hmm. The problem, of course, is the story doesn't work. It, it just can't be replicated. It, it, it's not falsifiable. And uh, what I mean by that is I, I tell a lot of the people that I'm showing this demonstration, I says, look, we're going to do a science experiment. Now, we all know that science... You know, to be true science, it must be observable and repeatable. Let's try to repeat the story and see if it works. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. And, uh, you know, try to get even Tumbaga down to 53 pounds. Even if it was 53 pounds, it's still impossible to do what Joseph Smith did with them. You know, if we're going to read the story as it says, it's still impossible. But yet Mormons want to believe it, so they'll make up just about anything, sadly, to make it work. And... Uh, Fortunately, there are a lot of Mormons that see a problem in this. In fact, I'll tell you, I, I showed this one young man this whole thing. I went through it all, and he just sat there, and he just kept putting his hand on his chin like this, looking at my plates, and he goes, man, you've got a point. I says, now listen, you're going to watch a pageant tonight, this outdoor play, the Mormon Miracle Pageant. You're going to see Joseph Smith up there carrying these plates almost like they're balsa wood. I said, now you've lifted these, and, and this is only half. Mine are only 100 pounds if they were made of gold. Mine are only half, and you saw how heavy they are. And even if they were 53 pounds, that's, well, a box of paper. If you go to an Office Max or a home, you know, Office Depot, pick up a box of paper. That's about 42 pounds. 
And imagine carrying that for a distance of three miles, jumping over logs, running at the top of your speed. It's still, it's another incredible story. You know, it just can't happen. Martin Harris says that when he got to the Smith home, he handed the plates to his mother through the window. So that means he's going like this. And, uh, oh, you ought to hear the stories I've heard of all, how Joseph Smith could have used the plates to fight off the attackers. I went, how, swinging them? I said, well, I've got a handle on here. Smith didn't have a handle. He had to pick them up from the bottom, which makes them even heavier. Plus, they were actually smaller than my plates, which makes the weight even feel worse. Because the smaller the weight, the heavier, the smaller the size, the heavier it feels. A lot of people don't realize that. John Witso, a Mormon apostle, was one of the earliest that I have found that tried to use this alloy theory. And he felt that if the plates were an alloy of partial gold, that if the plates had a 10% air gap, he gave it 10%. Mormons today are now giving it 50% because they know 10 is not enough. But Witso said if they had a 10% air gap, the plates would have weighed 118 pounds, an easy weight for a man like Joseph Smith to carry. And I quote this to Mormons, and I say, obviously, John Witso never really tried to replicate his theory. We are trying to replicate it here. My plates are 18 pounds lighter than what John Witso said. And you can see, that is not an easy weight for anybody to carry. I don't care how strong you may think Joseph Smith was, and I don't know why Mormons do this, but I heard so many times, I hear so many times, they say, well, Joseph Smith was a buff farm boy as if working on a farm may, makes you an Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I tell him, I mean, look, Arnold in his prime couldn't do this. And that's not what farm boys look like. I had a few farm boys come and try to lift the plates. And, and they were definitely, they were, they were strong, they were solid. But they weren't, you know, walking like gorillas or anything like that. I mean, you know, their, their muscles are toned. And usually they were quite thin, you know, they were slim. And, I asked some of these farm boys, could you do that, what I just said? Could, could you replicate it? They all said no. They couldn't. I rest my case.